2018, when Skin Microbiota was the Personal Care Word of the Year, we decided to investigate the topic in relation to personal care preservatives. Besides the results, what we realized thanks to the first experimental approach on preservatives and skin microbiota are pros and cons of the methodology we approached. In fact, effects of preservatives on the skin microbiota can be evaluated through in vitro and in vivo tests. Let's see together what we are talking about. In vitro tests implies isolation and lab cultivation of skin resident microbes that subsequently are brought into contact with substances to be evaluated. In vitro method is characterized by some benefits and limits as well. First, it does not require excessive participation from the volunteers because they are not requested to pass through any skin treatment. Second, the protocol can be performed in the majority of microbiological lab. Techniques are quite easy and the equipment is not difficult to use. Third, results are fast to obtain and easy to interpret. Limits characterizing in vitro method are first the possibility to work only on an elected part of skin resident microorganisms. Second, microorganisms come into direct contact with substances while usually they are not applied directly on the skin. Then, in daily life, cosmetics remain on our skin for some hours, while in the experiment the contact lasts 24 hours. And also, microorganisms are isolated and then grown in the lab, while in the daily life they respond to external factors while living in their habitat. In light of the above, in vivo method should be preferred to answer the question whether cosmetics preservatives may or not interfere with skin microbiota. This method implies evaluation of skin microbiota composition before and after a treatment with a finished cosmetic product, including the substance under evaluation. Which is the current state of the art for the topic cosmetic preservatives and impact on skin microbiota? Among dozens of articles on cosmetics and skin microbiota, only few of them really focus on preservatives as ingredient and their potential interference with the skin microbiota. Most of the knowledge reported in these articles derives from in vitro tests. In the studies, not only single preservatives have been chosen, but also commercial available preservative blend and finished cosmetic product. The most investigated preservatives are phenoxyethanol and methylparaben. Unfortunately, it's not easy to draw a general conclusion and understand if they interfere with skin microbiota or not. Since for future development, in vivo testing is recommended, which are the benefits and limits of this approach? The benefits rely on the fact that volunteers' treatments mimic real-life preservative use. The evaluation of microbiota changes are made on the whole microbial community. Results can be very exhaustive. While looking at the limits, we have that other ingredients of the Finnish formulation may also interfere with skin microbiota. Intrinsic and extrinsic factors like diet, lifestyle, geographical location or pollution could affect the result. Finally, it is much expensive and sophisticated. Much remains to be done in order to be able to select double safety preservatives. Safety for the formula, where we don't want pathogens and safety for the skin, where we want to keep microbiota abuses. Someone would sing Ain't no mountain high enough, and the same goes for skin microbiota. Despite all the difficulties and unknown factors that could be encountered when testing it, the imperative is to approach the topic and try to give preliminary answers that can be used as starting points for further studies.